Hey there, welcome to Pepper Geek. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how I crossed these two pepper plants to create this, our own brand new hybrid pepper. So crossbreeding peppers is a very long process. You'll need some patience if you wanna create your own hybrid peppers. This has taken almost a full year to create and we're not even done. But in this video, I wanna share how you can create your own hybrid peppers from two different plant varieties. I'll cover everything from the delicate process of cross-pollination between your two plants and then growing out the future generations to find the traits that you want. We have a great printout that you can use to reference while you're crossing your peppers. Over long periods of time while you're crossing your own peppers, it can be easy to forget how things work. So there'll be a link down below where you can get that printout, put it in your grow area, and you can reference it when you need it. So let's step back about a year ago to when we got started. So crossbreeding peppers is essentially cross-pollinating two different varieties with one another. The goal is usually to combine desirable traits. In the case we'll be doing today, we have one plant that has variegated foliage, sort of yellow and green leaves, and one plant that has a more vigorous growth habit and a more interesting looking pepper shape. And the end goal will be to combine those two traits. So hopefully our hybrid will have a larger growth habit with variegated leaves and interesting looking peppers. Of course, this doesn't happen overnight. You need to grow out multiple generations of plants to get to your first hybrid stage. And beyond that, you need to grow more generations to stabilize your hybrid. But today I'll be talking about the hard work you need to put in at the beginning to be successful with your manual cross-pollination. But before we get into that, I wanna talk about which peppers can be crossed with one another. And there's a useful chart circulating on the internet which shows you which species can be crossed with other species. But if it's your first time crossbreeding, I would recommend staying within the same species. So these are both Capsicum chinense species peppers, Jay's Peach Go Scorpion, and the Nymphadora variety. But you can work within, say, Capsicum annuum and cross maybe a fish pepper with a bell pepper or a Serrano with a Poblano. Again, try to get creative, look for interesting varieties. Maybe you're after something that is disease resistant or maybe something that can grow in your particular climate. Again, that's up to you. That's where you can get creative and excited about your own personal unique project. This to us is more ornamental than practical. Of course, these peppers are delicious, but we're really interested in making something unique and special and beautiful for the garden. So with that, the first step, of course, is to grow out your two plants. You'll need at least one of each of your plants, and ideally you plant them at the same time to ensure that they're both going to flower at the same time as well. It's important that you have both plants flowering simultaneously so that you can cross-pollinate those flowers with one another. So let's assume you've gotten to that stage and you have both of your plants and they're both producing flowers. Let's start crossbreeding. So the first step is to identify flowers on each plant to use for cross-pollination. On one plant, find an open flower that is actively producing pollen. This plant will be considered the father or donor plant. On the other plant, find a flower bud that is not open, but looks like it will be blooming soon. This plant will be the mother plant and will grow out the fruit and seeds of your hybrid. Let's start with the mother plant with our unopened flower and do a little bit of dissection work. This is the trickiest part of the process. Each pepper flower contains both male and female reproductive components. And on our mother plant, we need to remove the pollen producing anthers from the flower bud to avoid self-pollination. This process is called emasculation. To do this, use a pair of tweezers to carefully remove the flower petals from the bud. This will reveal the anthers and pistil inside. Being as careful as possible, remove the anthers without damaging the pistil in the center. When you're done, you should have something that looks like this. If the pistil is damaged in the process or it falls off, don't panic, just look for another unopened flower and start over. Next, you'll need to harvest the pollen from the father plant. So on the other plant, I like to simply remove a flower from the father plant and gently brush the flower onto the emasculated flower on the mother plant. The goal is to get those tiny grains of white pollen right onto the tip of the pistil. After about five or 10 seconds, I like to store the flower in a container to repeat the process again tomorrow. 
or if there are plenty of other open flowers on the donor plant, this isn't really necessary. With that, use a small plastic baggie. I normally use these for storing seeds to cover up the pollinated flower bud on the mother plant. This prevents any other flowers on the plant from dropping their pollen onto our hybrid. Now for the best results, you wanna do a few things. One, you wanna repeat this process with a few flowers on each plant. It's fairly common for a cross to fail, so doing multiple all at once can increase your odds of getting one to stick. Two is you wanna repeat this process both ways, so there's no need to choose which plant should be the mother and which should be the father. They can both be both. So apply pollen from one plant to the other and then reverse the process, taking pollen from the other plant and crossing the other way. Another thing you should do is come back each day and apply additional pollen to the emasculated flowers. So remove that plastic baggie, take out your saved flowers or remove a new flower from your donor plant and apply it again. The reason for this is that the pistil on your flowers may not have been open for business, so to speak, as there is a small window when a flower can accept pollen into its stigma. If you notice the pistil slightly bending, this can be a sign that it is able to accept pollen. So brush the flowers daily for three to four days or so, covering up the bud after each session. Finally, remove other flowers on your plants to encourage your crosses to be given priority by the plant. Once the bud starts to swell up into a fruit, you can remove the covering and allow the pepper to develop. It will look exactly like a normal pepper for its parent plant on the outside, but the seeds will contain genetics from both plants. So allow the pepper to grow and fully ripen before harvesting. Okay, so checking in, the pepper has ripened fully. It's actually been ripe for about a week now, and that's really important. You don't wanna go picking the pepper as soon as it changes color. I like to leave the pepper on there for at least a week after it has changed color to make sure that the seeds inside are finished developing and are ready to be planted. I've made the mistake of picking a crossed pepper too soon, having all of the seeds fail. Don't set yourself back by potentially months by picking the pepper prematurely. But today we'll be picking the pepper, harvesting the seeds from it, and planting some of them fresh to get the next generation started right away. And I'll also be saving some of these seeds, drying them out and storing them in case we wanna use them later on. So with that, let's pick the pepper and harvest the seeds. So this pepper contains our F1 hybrid seeds. Let's harvest the seeds, get them planted into small pots, and grow them out to get seeds for the next generation. During this grow, there's no need to do anything with the flowers. If anything, you should just isolate the plants from other peppers to avoid any unwanted cross-pollination with these plants. In other words, you want your F1 hybrid plants to self-pollinate to keep your cross going in the right direction. About four months later, and our little plants are ripening up a few small peppers which carry the seeds for the next generation, F2, the most exciting one. So let's check in and get to the next step. So it has been four months since this plant and the other one sprouted. And as you can see, we're now at the fruiting stage. I was a little disappointed at first because none of the sprouts had variegated foliage, but this is just F1. This is just the first generation of our cross. And as you can see, it was definitely a success. The pods ripened to this orangey red color, which is definitely not typical of Jay's Peach Go Scorpion. And they're smaller in size and much smoother. So definitely a hybrid sort of mixed properties of the two crossed peppers. So like I said, this is the first generation or F1 filial first generation of our hybrid pepper. And these are very consistent. We had two plants planted in these small containers. Both of them produced very similar peppers. In fact, this is from the other plant, very similar size, shape, and color. But now is when the excitement really starts because the seeds contained in this first generation pepper contain the second generation, which is where most of the variability will happen. So today we'll be harvesting one of these peppers, planting all of the seeds in these two prepared containers and hoping for some variegated leaves. Again, it's very important that you wait for your peppers to ripen completely and leave them on the plant a little bit longer than you might think, just to make sure that the seeds inside of these pods are fully mature. So let's harvest this pepper here. And again, plenty of seeds inside there. They look nice and healthy, nice ivory color. So today I'll be planting all of the seeds from this pod. Again, expecting a lot of variation in the resulting plants. And in the case of our cross, I'll be looking for early signs of variegation on the seedlings. 
So I'll just spread out the seeds as much as I can here. You never know which one is gonna give you the trait that you're looking for, so. And yes, you can plant fresh pepper seeds. It's really no problem at all. By the way, this pepper smells pretty amazing. It smells like a typical Chinens, pretty floral, but also there's a nice bit of fruitiness in there that I really appreciate, so. Not nearly as much heat as you'd expect from Jay's Peach Ghost, which is actually a good thing in my opinion. Uh, Jay's Peach Ghost can be pretty overwhelming. Nice thick walls, crunchy and fruity, like I said. Okay, so the seeds are planted. I'm actually gonna be growing these indoors because they won't have enough time outside to come to maturity in our climate. So I'm just gonna have them indoors under grow lights and allow them to fruit. Let's check back in then, jump ahead, and hopefully we'll have some great news. Our F2 plants sprouted about eight days later, and a few days after that, we could start to identify variegated seedlings. Remarkably, almost exactly 25% of the sprouts were variegated, indicating that this trait comes from a recessive gene. Since this is one of the traits I care most about for this cross, I removed all the non-variegated seedlings. A couple weeks later, I removed all but one plant per container, removing the rest. Now, ideally, you would grow out all of the plants to fruiting to identify which plants have the best traits overall. While these plants are variegated, some may have larger fruits than others, or may have a more vigorous, larger growth habit, the only way to really know for sure is to grow them out all the way to fruition. However, I didn't have the space to grow a dozen or so plants indoors, so just two were chosen. But I have to say, the F2 plants were gorgeous, producing stunning foliage, exactly what we wanted, and after just a few more months of isolated growth, they were ready to harvest once again. So finally, that brings us to today, almost a year after starting this process, we have our F2 generation hybrid, which has some of the traits that we were looking for. Both of these plants have variegated foliage, but the pod size and shape is much different than the original two plants, and we're on track to find the shape of the pod that we want. Like I said, it's really important during that F2 generation to grow as many plants as possible because as you can see, these two plants produce different pod sizes. The one on the right is much larger than the one on the left. If we had more plants, we might find that one grows taller than the other, one might be more healthy than another, and of course one might have bigger or more attractive pod shapes than the others, and we would take the seeds from those peppers to choose for the next generation. I also decided to grow in these smaller containers, but you could grow in larger containers, again, to get a better sense of how your plants are gonna grow in the real world so that you can choose the right genetics to carry forward. One thing I do wanna emphasize again is that you wanna isolate your plants from each other and from any other peppers that might try to cross pollinate with your plants. So if they're outdoors, you're gonna to wanna to cover up the flowers before they open to make sure that your flowers are self pollinating for any of the fruits or plants that you plan to save seeds from and plant for the next generation. That's gonna make sure that your plants are staying on track and your hybrid isn't gonna get messed up by some other nearby pepper plant. Now I will be continuing this cross and carrying it through to the next few generations to try to find that ideal pod shape and variegated foliage, and we'll definitely do some updates here on the channel. But I hope this video has helped you with your own crosses. Let us know down in the comments what you'll be crossing. If you have some great ideas, I would love to hear them. Thanks so much for watching Pepper Geek, and I'll see you next time.